Hey guys, in this video we're going to be introducing ourselves to a shear force diagram and a bending moment diagram through the use of this fairly simple example problem just here. Alright, so let's get started. What is a shear force diagram? Shear force diagram. Well, it shows all the internal shear forces along the bar. And in internal is important because we actually managed to plot the internal shear force versus our horizontal distance of our bar x. So we can actually find out what the shear force is in our bar at any particular distance along our bar. That's what a shear force diagram shows. And a, sh and a bending, bending moment diagram shows all the internal um, moments moments along the bar. So once again, very similar to a shear force diagram, it's plotted against our horizontal distance x. Okay, so that way we can figure out what is the internal moment at any distance along our bar. Okay, now that we've got that sorted, let's sort, let's go into an approach to solving this problem. All right, here is our approach. Here is our approach. First things first, we're going to have to draw a free body diagram of our entire system just here. And the purpose of that is so we can calculate the reaction, reaction forces, right? And then once we've got our reaction forces, then what we have to do is we have to draw multiple other free body diagrams. Because in order to figure out the internal um, shear forces and internal moments, we need to make three separate cuts. We need to make a cut here, we need to make a cut here, and we need to make a cut here. So we can figure out how the shear force varies and how the moment varies at every part along this bar. So in fact, we'll have to make three free body diagrams, one of which will be for 0 is less than x is less than 1 meter, another one is for 1 meter is less than x is less than 2 meters, that's that's for the middle part of the bar, and the last part is 2 meters is less than x is less than 3 meters. Notice I've split up the free body diagram so we can analyze each chunk um, of this bar separately. Okay, so without any further ado, let's actually get involved into solving this thing. So here is our bar just here where we've replaced the supports with external forces. We've got, I'll call this AY here, we've got AX here, we've got BY here, and of course we've got our 30 newton force downwards here, that's 30 kilonewtons. This is 15 kilonewtons just there. Okay, well, fortunately, we already know how to solve this. We've done this hundreds of times, and we know that the sum of forces in the x direction is going to be equal to zero. That implies that ax must be equal to zero. So far, so good. We also know the sum of forces in the y direction is going to be equal to zero. That means that ay plus by is going to be equal to, in fact, I'll write the whole thing out. It's going to be minus 30 minus 15 is going to be equal to zero, which implies that AY plus BY is equal to 45. Still not useful yet, we still need another equation, so let's do the sum of moments around point A is equal to zero, and what are we left with? This is point A just here. Well, um, we know BY is positive because, in fact, let me specify this, positive, 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 due to right hand rule. So BY is going to be positive, so that's going to be BY times by this distance, which is which is uh, three meters, three meters. Remember, the length of our bar is three meters, right? So that's gonna be times by three meters, and we're gonna be subtracting that from 30 times by whatever this distance is. It's gonna be one meter, one meter, and then subtract that from 15 times two meters. This distance here is two meters right here. That's two meters, okay? And that is, of course, gonna be equal to zero. All right, so now we've got three equations, three unknowns, beautiful. We can plug them all together to solve that BY is going to be equal to 20 kilonewtons and AY is going to be equal to 25 kilonewtons. So far, so good. So we've got our reaction forces sorted. Now let's dive one step closer into solving this problem by first redrawing our new and improved free body diagram. All right, this is our new and improved free body diagram. And don't forget that we've defined X to be from our pin support onwards to the right, okay? So let's first take a cut here to figure out the internal shear force and moments in our first section of our bar. So that means we're doing a free body diagram for x is between zero meters 
and one meter. We're just concerning ourselves at this point with this part of the bar just here, okay? So let's 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 take this cut which I've gotten red just here and let's analyze that. So this is going to be our bar. This is going to be that cut I drew, right? And this right here is going to be a distance x just here towards our cut. That's what we're analyzing. That's the whole point of using x. We're analyzing the shear force and the moment at x okay so we know due to equilibrium equations that there must be an internal shear force and there must be an internal moment I'm going to assume the shear force is downwards and I'm going to assume the moment is counterclockwise just here right we also know we just calculated that ay was 25 kilonewtons are there any other forces nope but left of the red line there's no other external forces so now we can solve this directly we can go okay well that's easy the sum of forces in the x direction is equal to zero um, there aren't even any axial forces so that doesn't tell us anything and then the sum of forces in the y direction is equal to zero that's a little bit more useful we can easily see that v is going to be equal to 25 kilonewtons from that so far so good. I'm jumping a few steps, but I hope you can keep up with me. And now we're going to use the sum of moments around x, that's around this point, is going to be equal to zero. So let's do that. Well, f um, the moment around um, x is going to be interesting because m is going to be positive by our convention, so it's going to be m, right? But the 25 kilonewton force is producing a negative torque, so it's going to be equal to, it's going to be equal to 25 25 times by its distance, which is x in this case, x. That's really peculiar. Notice then that our moment is actually a function of distance along this bar. So basically the moment is increasing as we get further along this bar. All right, well, that's an interesting solution. Now let's go into our free body diagram. Let's isolate this off. Let's go into our free body diagram for one meter is less than x is less than two meters. So basically now we're just going to analyze this part we're just going to analyze, um, let me draw it in blue, we're going to be analyzing this part of our bar just here. Okay, so let's do that. Well, let's do that by first cutting somewhere along the midsection here and see what happens at x. So um, if I were to draw that now, our free body diagram looks slightly different. It's a little bit longer. We've got this red cut section where we've sliced it off right and we know we've got two other external forces we've got the 25 kilonewton force here and we're now including this 30 kilonewton force just here we've got this 30 kilonewton force just here okay likewise we still have an internal shear force i'm going to assume it's down and i'm going to assume the moment is counterclockwise by the way i should probably say some textbooks assume it's in the other direction but um it doesn't matter what notation you use it's still correct um Okay, so now we can actually solve this directly. We know that the sum of forces in the y direction is equal to zero, which means then that um, that means that v v is going to be equal to well, what will it be? It'll be thirty. Um, it'll be twenty-five minus thirty. It'll be twenty-five minus thirty. Okay, so that's that's once you do the force. So that means v is going to be equal to minus five kilonewtons. Interesting. Interesting. So notice how V just plummets downwards right after this 30 kilonewton force. We'll be exploring that in detail when we draw the diagram. Okay, now let's talk about the sum of moments around X. So that's, remember, this point is X. This distance here is X, just here. So the sum of moments around X is equal to zero. So let's do that. Um, we neglect V, meaning that, because we're doing our points around X, so that means uh, we're going to be dealing with our moment, which is positive. So it's going to be m. Um, the 30 kilonewton force is also positive. So let's just do this a long way. So that's going to be 30 times by this distance right here. This distance, what's that? Well, we know that this distance here is 1 meter, right? We know that this total distance is x. So that means we know that this here is x minus 1. So it's going to be times by x minus 1 right there. Okay, and we know that's going to be equal to, we know it's going to be equal to 25 times by x, which is accounting for the torque done by this force just here. Okay, um, once we do that, we can solve for m, and we're left with m is going to be equal to, let's see, 25 minus 30, that's going to be minus 5x, and then plus, plus 30, 30. Okay, so that is m right there. Okay, so far so good. Notice it's still a function of x, but it's changed slightly. Okay, okay, well now, in fact, let me just go down so you can see, but now we're gonna be focusing on this part, just here. We're gonna be focusing on our last part. And to do that, we're gonna make another cut along here. 
All right. In fact, let me uh, let me just copy down the free body diagram again. All right, guys, I've copied down the free body diagram, and now we're going to analyze the final part of our bar just here. So we're going to be analyzing the part from x is between x is between two meters and three meters, because remember x is defined from here onwards. So we're dealing with x is all the way over here. That's what we're dealing with. Okay, so let's do this. Um, we've got a cut section here. So if we do the whole thing, it'll look like this. We could do the whole thing. It will be massive. It'll be all the way along here. And we'll have our cut section here. And we'll have to include forces here of 15 kilonewtons. And we'll have to include force here of 30 kilonewtons. And of course, we'd still have our 25 kilonewton force here. We could do it this way. That'll be totally fine. This will be V. And this will be M. All right, we could analyze this from scratch. We could definitely do it this way. That's what we've done with the other ones, but you'll find it'll be easier to actually analyze it from the right-hand side of the bar. So if we do the right-hand side, the right-hand side looks like this. This is where that cut section is, right? Notice that V, due to Newton's third law, must be equal and opposite. So V will be up. Likewise, M will be clockwise this time. So this will be M, this will be V, and because we're viewing the right-hand side of the bar this time, this will be 20 kilonewtons. 20 kilonewtons. No matter which free body diagram you use, you're going to get the exact same answer, I promise you. Right? So um, let's analyze this using Newton's laws. We know that the sum of forces in the y direction is equal to zero. That means that v, that means that v is going to be equal to minus 20 kilonewtons. Right? That's just that's summing these up. Okay, now let's use the sum of moments around point, well, point x is going to be equal to zero. Remember, this distance here is x right? And the total length of the bar is three meters, which means that this distance from here to here is actually just going to be three meters minus x. I hope you can see that. That's, that's just the, that's the length of this part of our bar just here, the, since the cut to the very end, okay? Okay, so let's do the sum of moments for our second part, and what are we left with? Well, um, the 20 kilonewton force is going to produce a positive torque, so that's going to be 20 times by its distance, three minus x, and the moment this time is negative, so it's going to be minus m, and that's going to be equal to zero, okay? All right, well, now we can solve for that directly, and we're left with m must be equal to, well, what will it be? It'll be 60 minus 20x, okay? So now we have a whole bunch of solutions. Let's compile them all. All right, so on the left right here, we've got all of our compiled results just here. And on our right, we've got what was our free body diagram just here. And underneath it, we've got what will become our shear force diagram. We'll call this y-axis v. And on the x-axis, we've got x, our distance across our bar, right? And then on the y-axis of this one, I'll call this m. So this will be our bending moment diagram. And on the x-axis, we will once again have x. Okay, so now it's just the job of literally just plotting everything we have here onto this diagram just here. Well, if we were to plot the shear force diagram first, let's realize that for x is between 0 and 1 meter, v is equal to 25 kilonewtons. What does that mean? Well, if we were to plot for x is between 0 and 1 meter, that means that it's constant. It means that v is just going to be a horizontal line at 25 kilonewtons just there. That's what it means. Then for x is between 1 and 2 meters, it just randomly plummets to minus 5. So it just goes pshoo, straight down to minus 5 and stays there at minus 5 just there. So that's going to be minus 5 kilonewtons right there. Then at between 2 and 3 um, two and three meters, it plummets further down by an additional 15 to minus 20 kilonewtons. Bam, and then it just goes straight along just there. Now there's reason to suggest that it goes straight up at three meters right here, but I'll get to that analysis at the very end. Okay, so um, I should also mention this is going to be minus 20 kilonewtons just there. That's the final um, height just there. Okay, now let's plot the moment diagram. This is slightly harder to do. Um, first of all, for x is between 0 and 1 meter, we've got m is equal to 25x, which means when x is equal to 0, m is equal to 0, so it starts here, and it's a straight line. It's linearly, it's got a, it's got a linear relationship, and it stops at 25, stops at 25 um, newton, kilonewton meters, kilonewton meters just there. That's because this distance is one, so plug in x is equal to one, you get 25. Okay, now let's do this one just here. What happens 
when x is equal to 1? Well, it's going to be minus 5 times 1 plus 30, which is minus 25, which means that this point is shared. So it's going to start where it ended off. So it's going to start here, and then it's going to go to, well, whatever this value is when x equals 2. It's just going to be minus 5 times 2 plus 30, which is um, minus 10 plus 30, which is 20. So it just goes like that. There we go, to, to 20 kilonewton meters right there. Okay, and that's at two meters. Okay, now what about this last one? What happens when x is equal to two meters? Well, what's minus 20 times two plus 60? It's gonna be minus 40 plus 60, which is 20, meaning it starts just here again. It's all connected, which is really interesting. Um, and then where does it end off? Well, plug x is equal to three and you get zero. So it goes straight down, much steeper this time, all the way to zero. And that is the shear force diagram and the bending moment diagram, all sorted from scratch. Now, what we could have done is, is use the well-known formula that dm dx is actually equal to v. Now, I haven't proven this in a video yet, but I will very soon. But you can see how this is actually held up in this diagram just here. Notice that the slope of this blue line just here is equal to the magnitude or just the height of each of these parts just here. Notice that the slope of this blue line is 25 and notice that the height of this is 25. So you can actually see how this is actually very consistent with this formula just here, right? Once again, I'll prove this in a future video, but for now you could have rather than manually plotting out moments here, you could have actually used the fact that moments must be zero here and zero here and plotted it out using this. Another formula which I haven't shown yet, but I will show soon, is the formula dv dx is equal to minus w. It didn't really apply in this particular case because we weren't dealing with distributive loads, but it will soon once I cover a few more example problems. Okay, guys, that's this video sorted. Um, I hope that made sense, and I'll cover a few more harder examples soon.